Okay, so what I'm going to talk about uh, today follows on very nicely, actually, from uh, Beck and um, her concern with blended learning and getting the balance right. Um, I'm going to um, focus, though, on uh, one thing that is of particular concern to me and was the real motivation for, um, for the uh, introduction of some online... Uh, online tools into the teaching of one of our level one media courses and, and really my main concern here is with formative assessment. Um, previously I've held the role of uh, Associate Dean Learning and Teaching in the Faculty of Humanities and Social Sciences and one of the things that's uh, very, very apparent there is that um, often there is a, a, a great deal of confusion around uh, formative and summative assessment. Um, so. I think it's very, very important that we do understand that whilst, of course, when we are assessing our students' work and setting them assignments and grading them, and those grades and those marks will ultimately contribute to their final course mark, it's very, very important to understand that, of course, formative assessment can be built into that. And, of course, we do provide feedback to our students, and that, is, that constitutes the main form of formative assessment that we're, that we're using in relation to those assignments. Um, formative assessment can live and exist on its own, and it should live and exist on its own within our courses, okay? But if it's purely formative assessment, it, does, it isn't graded, it doesn't have a mark attached to it, that's the definition of, of formative assessment. But it's, it's where we're looking at the student's work, we're listening to what they're saying, we're, we're observing their presentations, we're looking at written work that those students are doing, and we're using that as the basis to provide some kind of assessment um, of, that, of those students, of that work, and of their capabilities providing that back to those students um, so that the students can then hopefully learn from that assessment and act on it, okay? Um, why don't we do a much formative assessment? I think it's because um, evidently there are costs associated with doing formative assessment and so we tend to rely on some fairly familiar um, uh, systems for providing formative assessment. Um, in my own faculty, typically the main form of, of pure formative assessment that would be provided to students would be in class during tutorials, listening to students doing presentations, getting involved in discussions, and providing them with verbal, verbal feedback. Okay? But providing students with feedback on actual pieces of submitted work is often very, very difficult to do, I think primarily because it can be very, very costly. Okay? Um, also, at the bottom here, also want to suggest that formative assessment is um, perhaps the key to um, small group discovery. Okay? If we really want to engage with this concept of small group discovery, then one of the ways in which we can do that most effectively is by thinking very, very carefully about opportunities for formative assessment. So it's for those, for those reasons, that's the, main, that's the main motivation for this presentation. That's the main motivation for some of the changes that I've introduced into into this course. Okay, so just a little bit of background on the course. It's Digital um, Revolutions, Introduction to Media Digital Revolutions. It's a first year compulsory core course for the Bachelor of Media degree. This year it has somewhere in the region of about 260 students enrolled in the course. It's taught through a, a two hour lecture and a one hour tutorial session. Um, those things have been in place um, as modes of teaching right since the beginning of the Bachelor of Media program when the course was first introduced in 2012, uh, 2002. Um, those elements have not changed, so the things that I'm going to mention today are all things that have been added into the course and are existing alongside those pre-existing uh, modes, of, modes of teaching, modes of delivering. Uh, the two things I'm going to talk about here are two of the assessment items included in the course, um, and what I want to emphasise here is that the decision that we've made is to um, break those assessment items down into two clearly distinguished um, elements, one of which is purely formative um, and the other element which is both summative and formative. Okay? Um, so, the first thing that we've done is we've uh, used my uni to uh, set up groups. Um, each of these groups is based around the pre-organised tutorial groups that students have enrolled into um, and uh, what that enables us to do is make use of um, the fact that the uh, wiki and blog tools on my uni can be integrated in, into those groups and be made available to each group um, as a tool. Those have been set up um, um, to minimise the opportunities for students to actually uh, edit each other's work. We've tried to avoid that wherever possible. But what we do want to happen is for students' um, work, students' formative work, to be observable by all of the other students. And if um, necessary, and we've encouraged the students to do this, to use the comment feature 
in those tools so that they can see what other students are doing and through the comment feature offer their own um, uh, peer, um, peer evaluation and peer guidance to, to other students. Okay. Um, so the first assessment is divided into two elements, and the wiki element is, as I said, purely formative. Okay? The students are required to um, complete a task where they, uh, they um, self-identify a particular element, a particular type of e-publishing, um, and then they write a short, approximately 500-word wiki entry um, based around you know, the notion of Wikipedia and encyclopedia entry, we um, ask the students to focus purely on descriptive elements here. It's all about building up students' ability to um, write descriptively, to describe the evidence that they're going to be increasingly using in their, their later work as uh, media students. It's also designed to encourage students to move from being simply consumers of media to actually start to become analysts of media. Okay, so the descriptions um, we ask the students to write their descriptions based around a whole series of uh, analytical precepts that we introduce to them in the first weeks of the course. Okay? So the descriptions are not completely free form, but the descriptions are based around a requirement to focus on particular elements of media production, consumption, distribution, and also things like um, some of the legal aspects of media production. So that's what they do in the wiki, and the wiki provides us with an opportunity to um, look at what students are capable of doing in those very first weeks of their time here at university and provide them with a feedback. Okay, most of that feedback is currently provided to students in class, so all of the tutors have an opportunity to prepare for classes by identifying what individual students in the class are actually working on in their wiki, and if necessary, engage with the students one-on-one -on -one in class to provide them with feedback. Um, tutors are also encouraged to identify students who they appear to be in particular need of assistance through the wiki and if necessary engage with those students either through the wiki itself through commenting or if necessary making contact with those students um, outside of the context of class to um, you know advise them you know for example I've noticed in your wiki that certain you know you're not um, handling referencing very well, here's where you can go in the writing centre to get advice about things like referencing. So it provides us with an opportunity to see what students are capable of doing and through formative assessment intervene prior to the completion of the uh, next element of the assignment, which is an actual graded report. Okay? Um, this is all set up within the grade centre, so I won't spend too much time talking about what you can see on the screen here, but uh, I just want to emphasise here that through the grade centre tool on my uni, um, we've been able to organise things so that we've actually got quite an efficient setup to enable tutors to um, carry out that process of, of, of monitoring. Okay? Because whilst the wiki is not graded, um, we do ask tutors to actually validate um, that the, the students have engaged in the wiki um, exercise prior to submission of their, uh, their assignment. So we have uh, adaptive release set up in the, in the grade centre so that students, when they come to submit their final report via Turnitin, can only do so once um, the tutor has validated that they've uh, attempted the wiki assignment and then um, Turnitin is released onto MyUni so the students can submit. Okay? So it's not graded and we don't necessarily go around and set a minimum threshold of expectations for what students have to do in the wiki. Um, every single student eventually does have their wiki validated, no matter what they've actually done. But we do take that as an opportunity also to warn students who have not done any formative work in preparation for the final report that they are obviously um, you know, running the risk that they're going to find it very difficult to actually um, get, uh, reach a, a good standard when it comes to the final summative assessment as well. Uh, this gives us an opportunity to talk to students about things like time management and uh, preparation of things like assignments as well. So, in other words, the preparatory work that students often do for a summative assessment, which is often hidden away from us, we don't actually see what they're doing, this actually opens up and reveals what students are actually doing and what it sometimes reveals in, in the case of some students is they're not doing very much at all. Okay, so they then, they then submit for the first assessment which uh, involves the wiki, they then submit a very short report. It, is, uh, it may in many people's eyes be a scandalously short report because the word limit is about 250 words. But as we say to the students, you're in a media degree, not many media organisations will ask you to submit 2,000 word assignments. Um, you have to get used to writing according to very, very tight word limits when you're working in the media professions. So this is actually modelling some professional um, expectations anyway. But what it also does is it means that rather than spend our time as tutors reading 
um, 1,500 or 2,000 words, we spend our time reading 250 words and we use the time that we would have otherwise spent reading on providing formative assessment and formative feedback on the assignments itself. And as this example shows, 250 words, but you can see there's actually quite a lot of feedback included on there. Um, myself and the other tutors have monitored this exercise. We've asked ourselves the question, would we have learned more about these students and their capabilities if we'd marked um, five times or ten times as many words? Our honest opinion is that we don't think we would have learned any more. Um, can a student use evidence? Can they use literature and sources? Can they reference properly? Can they write properly? Do you learn anything more from 2,000 words than you would learn from 250? My guess is not. It cuts down on our marking time, but it reduces not one iota the amount of um, feedback that we can give to those students. In my opinion, it actually increases the amount of feedback we can give to those students. Um, the next assessment is set up, um, by the way, we also use the rubric, so I'm just going to point out that um, the other great thing about feedback, yes, the other great, great thing about feedback on Turnitin is you've got all these great tools, you've got rubrics, you've got um, uh, in-text uh, comments, you've got overall comments, you've got things like that you can use. The next assessment is set up exactly the same way. The one, ex the one difference is it's a longer assessment at the end, it's a longer essay, and instead of the wiki we use a journal, and the journal content this time around is around students doing independent work via the library to identify good sources of literature that relate to the topics that we're looking at. That literature will form the basis of their assignment when they hand it in, and again, exactly the same things apply. We can see what they're doing, we can comment on whether they're selecting appropriate literature, we can comment on their summaries, we can comment on things like referencing. Basically, we know what they're doing before they submit, okay? And that's the essence of it. Why wait until they actually submit an essay to tell them what they're doing wrong? Why not tell them what they're doing wrong before they submit it?